Hello everybody, this is Mr. Fleming coming to you with a little review video. Um, so, here we go, we're in Algebra 2. So our objectives for this little video, we're just going to be able to review for the final exam. Um, I just want to go over the topics that you're going to be responsible for, um, things that you've covered throughout the year. Um, you know, you should be familiar with all of these. And then we're going to work on some review questions. Okay, so today, the things that we're going to review are composite functions and inverse functions. Um, also, we'll work with some radicals and then some imaginary complex numbers using the letter I. Um, okay, so next week, um, we're gonna have our Zoom class in person. We're gonna do piecewise and discontinuity, polynomial division, and then end behavior and extrema. And then the week after that, we're going to review exponentials and rational functions and asymptotes. All right. Um, so I'm going to go to now my whiteboard. And we're going to just, um, you know, do some problems together real quick. Okay. So here is the whiteboard. And um, so the first thing I want to review is the composite functions. So, for example, you have like, let's say, you know, your f of x is x squared plus 2, and then your g of x is going to be um, x minus 7. Okay, so you can do all tons of things with these functions, like if you did f Oh, sorry. If you did f plus g of x, this would just be the same as f of x plus g of x. So then you just simply add these two functions together, like x squared plus 2, and then plus x minus 7. Notice how I'm using these parentheses. Um, because, you know, you want to keep everything, you know, we'll see in a second. So, you know, I can just go ahead and add these two together. So x squared, what is that, plus x, and then uh, what is that? You know, minus 5, and that's it. If I wanted to do f minus g of x, then, you know, simply just subtract the functions. It's the same thing as f of x minus g of x. And then, so just make sure you're using those parentheses again. So we'll have um, x squared plus 2 minus um, x minus 7. So make sure that you know that this negative distributes, okay? So you have x squared plus 2 minus x plus 7, right? So then you just kind of add these two together. That's um, going to be x squared plus x plus 5. All right. So you can also do um, composite functions, which means you can kind of, what is it, nest them, if you will. So real quick, you can do f of g of x. Um, in this case, remember that our f of x was x squared plus 2 is f of x. <laughs> and then our um, x minus 7 is our g of x. Okay, so that means ooh, I'm going to just go ahead and put the whole g of x function into the x of the f of x function. So instead of x squared, I'm going to do x minus 7 squared plus 2. And then I'm just going to simplify um, and, you know, kind of write it all out to combine it. So if I do that, I would get x squared minus 14x plus 49 plus 2. Then I got x squared minus 14x um, plus 51. Okay. So those are um, composite functions right there. So the next thing we're going to work on is inverse functions. So say like, for example, you have our f of x is x squared plus 
two. Uh, remember, we did two different methods to do this. So remember, we write the, uh, we, you know, people in the math world write F negative one um, X, we just means that means the inverse. Like imagine it's like a fraction, you know, negative one is a fraction exponent, you know, okay. Um, so to do this, um, we can do the two methods. So the first method I can just write, uh, you know, what happens to the X first. So the X gets squared and then it's um, add two. So then I'll do the opposite, right? So minus two, and then the, you know, the op, you do the opposite operation in the opposite order. Um, and so square root. So then I'll just kind of like put the X, start with this and then square root it. So then I'll have X minus two, and then I'll square root the whole thing. So that's the inverse of this one sorry, equals f to the negative one of x. So these two functions are inverses. All right, the second method that we know how to do this is switch the x and y. So, you know, I'm gonna replace f of x with y equals x squared minus two, and then switch the x and y. So if x equals y squared minus two, and then I'm gonna solve for y. So I add two on both sides x plus 2 equals y squared, and then I have to square root that, so y equals square root of x plus 2. There really is like a plus and minus here, but don't worry about that too much. Okay, so I'm going to erase this for now, and we're going to move on to the next topic. So those were composite functions and inverse functions. Um, so the next thing that we're going to work on is radicals. So radicals, you know, are square roots, basically. So I'm going to go ahead and do some examples. So first thing, you, um, you know, you, we did was kind of like the converting from radical form to exponential form. So we know that the square root of x is the same as um, x to the one half power, right? Um, so when you, you know, you can use this when you're changing from radical form with a little check to the exponential form with an exponent. So say we have, you know, the cubed root of x parentheses up to the fifth power. Well, to simplify this, um, put the thing on the square root on the bottom. So it's the cubed root, so put a three at the bottom. And then the exponent just goes on the top. So x five thirds, not too bad. All right. So, you know, then you also want to make sure you know how to simplify radicals. So here's a good one. We have um, the square root of negative 80. We know that you can't take a square root of a negative number, um, but there is a funky little math way to do that is to use the letter I. So I'm just going to go ahead. You know, I know that this is, um, you know, square root of 80 times the square root of one. You can always do that, break it up in multiplication like that. So of I root 80, but I'm not quite done yet because I want to make sure that when I simplify the radical, it's all in, so I can't simplify it anymore, right? Um, and I can simplify this 80 because I know that 80 is 16 times five. So we do I times root 16 times times, what is it, root five. Root 16 is obviously four, so then four i, and then root five. Perfect, so then I can't simplify that anymore. And you always wanna make sure that, you know, you write your coefficient first, then the i, and then usually the radical is on the, the right side, you know? So if you had like square root of five times x, you can write that as x root five. Kind of cool. Okay, um, there's one more thing I wanted to do. And I hope you're pausing if you need to, because you can, because this is a video. Um, so you can also do some, you know, arithmetic with um, i's and radicals. So say, for example, you have negative three plus i, and they have a nice little parentheses here plus negative six 
plus 7i, just like that. And you know what, you could, even though that i is the square root of negative one, just treat it like any other variable. It's just like an x. So we're just gonna, you know, leave it as it is and combine like terms. So, okay, I see this negative three and this negative six, that'll be negative nine. And then i plus seven i is eight i. So it just works like a, a normal x. Um, careful of your negatives. If this was a negative, we would have had to distribute it, but we don't, we're lucky here. So, and then the other thing that we can do is watch this. So we'll have three, negative root 12, um, oops, and then plus three root three, and then plus three root 20. Okay, so when you're simplifying radicals, remember to first to get everything in the most simplified form so you can't simplify anymore. So find those perfect squares, combine like terms, and then voila. So this 12, I know that's four and three. I know, and I know that square root of four is two. So I can just do negative three times two, which is negative six, square root of three. Perfect. And then I have three root three. I can't do that anymore. But then three root 20, I know that 20 is four times five, square root of four is two. So three times two is six. And then I'll leave the root five. Now, this is just combined like terms with different things, right? I see that these two have the same square root. So I'm going to treat the square root kind of like an x, like a, you know, like a variable, and then combine the coefficients. So negative 6 plus 3 is going to be negative 3 root 3. And then I can't combine it with the 6 root 5. Um, so I'm going to leave that how it, how it is. All right. So those were the three things um, we reviewed today. So hopefully that was uh, you know, edifying and a quick review. We'll do another quick review in class um, next week, June 1st. Hope to see you there. And otherwise, have a great week and best of luck. Bye-bye.